see what it can do with the chalk! I'm going to show you how I turn this old flats boat into a butt kicking diving machine. Yes, I'm building a do it yourself panga on a budget. You are not going to want to miss this episode. Let's get started. My buddy Dave was going to make it into a party barge. As you can tell, it's a really wide boat. And he's done all the fun work of stripping it. All right, so I started my cuts. No turning back now. Holy moly. Let's see what we got. I think you're about to see what this is going to turn into. That's how you do it. Pretty sweet. Pretty thick. Good quarter inch thick at least. Solid glass. It's gonna work. This is what we got. Long skinny boat. Long and skinny means efficient and fast. Not so much stability, but I'm liking the trade-off. The other thing I like here is these reverse chines. So this is gonna be a nice hard chine. That reverse chine is gonna help. It goes all the way forward. You can see underneath. It's gonna help deflect some spray, give a little stability. Um, I like it. Look at that. Long hole pad narrows all the way to the very front. 10 inches wide and back. That is why I chose this hole. One of the reasons. When people are looking for a project boat, sometimes they're distracted by the entire, kind of what the whole boat looks like. Um, gunnels, overall layout. For me, I was concerned with what part of the boat actually rides in the water. Um, at the end of the day, a boat can look like shit on the outside, but down here is what counts. And if it's the right hole design, um, that's to me, that's how you pick the boat that you want uh, for your application. And for me, I like it. So, looking at the front of this boat, you can see it's got a little bit of a V to it. Which clearly isn't made. It's a flats boat by design, right? It's an Osborne flats boat, in case I didn't mention it already. 19, 20 foot. Uh, earlier in the week, we got the boat cut up to look like this. The boat is now ready for the next stage, which is putting some sides on it. Um, that's the next step. I want to put sides on the boat just to get in the water, do a float test, um, then determine deck height. Uh, I'm guessing the floor is going to need to be as low as possible. Well, I'm not guessing. I know the floor is going to need to be as low as possible um, just to lower that center of gravity. This is where we're going to start. Transom. Everything so far on this boat has just been a rough cut to trim it down to the basic shape. But now we're going to start at the back of the boat and work our way forward. So, um, 
it's going to be important that we get some good measurements on the transom uh make some marks I'm just using a gold sharpie here we're gonna make some reference points let's do it all right so what i'm doing is i'm making marks number one is going to be the center line and i'm cross-referencing i'm doing cross measurements I really want to make sure that everything is as accurate as possible since I'm going to be working from the back of the boat forward. And here you can see I've got all my marks made, my lines. I am basically ready to make my cuts. So now I'm going to cut the top of the transom using a good old circular saw with a wood blade. That's it. Keep it simple. And then I'm going to do my side cuts. And then I am done. Transom shape is cut. Oh, there we go. You can see here, basically this is the line. I'm gonna follow this line. Um, this is kind of the contour, it's hard to see. You can see it there. So I'm gonna space it, tape it off with some tape, get a nice clean line sweeping up to the bow and then trim that out. All right, so all I'm doing here is getting my masking tape and I am laying out these lines. I'm doing it by eye. And once it looks good, I am ready for the circular saw. Pretty simple. I'm just gonna run this right down my line. And I know that if I need to clean it up, I can always do so with the grinder. All right. See what we've cut. Oh, look at that. I'm kind of straight. Yes. Basically, just put this as a first layer to seal. It's a mixture of uh, bonding putty, resin, and some chop. Put some of the repairs from today. Overall, uh, productive day two. Um, doing good. Got some repairs and got the hole trimmed to where we want it to be. Okay, day three. It has been raining all day long. Finally stopped raining. It's 1.30. Sun is out. <laughs> Boat is looking good. You can see some of the fiberglass work from yesterday. What we're gonna do now is grind this leading edge um, and do some glass work while it rained the garage is now kind of clean <laughs> um, it's clear it's a lot better than what it was before if you saw the video yesterday um, so this is the space I'm gonna grind it out here get it ready and then bring it in for glass work before I start grinding I want to show you my best friend baby powder this is the key to not being itchy and nasty um best thing you can use when grinding fiberglass would be one of those nice full suits um second best thing you can do is baby powder it's so fine it actually gets in all your pores and basically clogs your pores so that fiberglass can't get in there and you're not all itchy so this is what i use Okay, grinding done. By the way, take a look at this grinding wheel. This is a thing that's brand new. Doesn't even look like it was worn out at all. These things are awesome for grinding uh, fiberglass. As you can see, 
at the whole edge, both sides, totally ready. Yes! So the reason I took it off the trailer is I want to be able to lay it on flat bottom so that there's no stress on the hole. And being that this has a nice wide hole pad, this should sit nice and flat. Um, no stress, no load on the hole. Uh, be lying, laying nice and even, nice and flat. We do the glass work, gunnels, a couple structural things, and load it back in the trailer. So, this is the sides. Are gonna be to Venicel H60, 3 8 inch. Um, those are gonna be the sides for the boat. All right, so you can see the form here. This is basically holding the Divinicel in place. And then I can now glass where I've already pre-coated the Divinicel. This is a little patch where I scarfed it. And then what I have on the bottom is duct tape to hold it. That works fucking great. Shitty duct tape. <laughs> so now I've gone ahead and I've tabbed in my sides. You know, I'm doing this because I want the sides to be flexible. I want to be able to move it around, get them in the right position. So I'm tabbing them in with just a simple strip of 1708 cloth with a vinyl ester resin. After I get everything installed where I want them, I can then finally right, glass so them. So day four, this will be the first um, first full day that we have. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, looking to get a lot done today. Um, yesterday, got a good amount done. As you can see, we've got one of the sides taking shape. And this is Again, Divinicel H60. All right, almost got both sides laid up this morning. Um, this is how we're looking. Got the hair dryer to help just kick it off, run it for a couple minutes. Um, but we're getting there. Just going section by section. I've got forms laid up and what I'm comparing right now is a curve, a curve how it goes, well, it matches up on this side. So one thing is there is a form right here, here's a duct tape. Okay, check it out. We have everything glassed in. Look at those curves, oh man. So yeah, pretty wicked. The bow, time for the bow. It's been a long day today. Um, started this morning, got everything glassed in so. Uh, I'm gonna start on the bow now. Try to get that done. All right, it is nighttime, and this is what we got done today. End of day four. Gunnels are glassed in. All right, so here we are. Um, late start today. Letting everything dry up. Um, actually, did a little bit this morning. See, got a form here. Use this to make a form. Basically, lay the glass. And what I'm doing now is getting the outside prepped. So, this is what it looks like. Not hard to see. And now, basically, shaping it. I just finished shaping this side. 
can see sanding it, getting it to be kind of smooth. We'll start laying glass, building it up. But you can see under there, just getting the edges prepped clean. <laughs> ugly like this but it's gonna be pretty this is all trimmed up okay today's a big day morning of day six and today is the day I've been waiting for uh, we're gonna water test the boat today I'm super excited about that um, I yesterday didn't really video much um, because the GoPro SD card kept it was it's been full and even though I dumped it to the computer it's still saying it's full blah 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 I need to basically format the entire thing um, and kind of when you get in the work mode in the groove um, you know, Chelsea helped me last night do some of the glass work and we basically got everything done so now we've got um, it's actually rounded pretty nice um, so the boat is ready for float test um, I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming as you can see get this excess trimmed off Yeah. On our way to test drive the boat, first time. It's either gonna go great or not. Here we go! Let me tell you, this never gets old. Float testing and test running a project boat for the first time is absolutely one of the best parts of the build. To see how your project floats, to see how it sits, the weight balance, stability, and of course, a test run. Seeing the performance figures is definitely an awesome part. So, if you want to see the rest of this build, you're going to have to tune into the next episode where I finish the floors, the console, the overall build. And of course, we go for our final test runs where you get to see for yourself how this thing does in open water. And let me tell you, it is going to blow your mind. So thank you for watching this episode. If you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed, I would love for you to do so because this really motivates me to continue doing these videos. I do them for you. So see you next time.